I'm Dr. Barry Epley, plastic surgeon of Indianapolis, and I wanted to provide you with some of the basic science and research that I performed on lactosorb bone fixation, which is now the most popular resorbable form of bone fixation for craniofacial surgery in the world. This is a quick review of some research that I did in the early 1990s to substantiate the complete resorption and safety of lactosorb devices. Uh, beginning in 1990, the question became, could we eventually replace the use of metal devices with resorbable devices, particularly in pediatric craniofacial surgery? The ability to hold the bones together without ever having to remove metal devices later in a growing skull is, is certainly of great importance. At that time, some initial work was done with a known polymer called polylactic acid. And as you can see here in this slide, this was an original plate placed in 1990. And if you look at this animal one year later in 1991, you can see that there's absolutely no change whatsoever in that resorbable polymer device. So the concept of the historic use of PLA, polylactic acid, and a combination of copolymers, polylactic and polyglycolic, were put together, which was felt to be much more capable of resorbing in a timely manner. Here we see another rabbit skull, which had some plates placed. And if you follow these plates over the course of a year, as you can see in the lower histology, uh, you can see it slowly shrinking away. And eventually, by one year of time, there is 100% complete resorption without, without any effect on the overlying bone. One of the relevant issues to see in these slides that as resorbable screws resorb, the screw actually shortened and the tip retrudes within. Another one of the early questions we had was, would it make any difference in the skull whether the plates were held together by metal or resorbable bone fixation? And in a different rabbit study model, uh, we demonstrated that there were no differences in the healing capabilities between resorbable or metal bone fixation in the skull area. Now that the resorption was fairly well documented in an efficient and safe manner, the question becomes, could they be technically applied, or did they have the inadequate biomechanical strength to support the needs? A lot of pull-out screw testing was done in human cadavers, which demonstrated that a 2.0 screw, resorbable screw, was essentially equivalent to the pull-out of a 1.5 screw. And the special design plates, called railed plates, uh, held a good strength, 67, 70% of its initial strength out to about 75 days, where after there was a fairly rapid drop-off, which would certainly be adequate for craniofacial surgery. These went on beginning in 1993 to undergo clinical testing and trials, and now have enjoyed an over 15-year history of outstanding success in pediatric craniofacial surgery. Now here's a good example of one of the early cases of a metopic suture craniosynostosis and another example of a unilateral coronal craniosynostosis repair held together with lactosorb resorbable bone fixation. 